You're listening to the Connecticut Real Estate Edge Podcast, your source for tips and tricks on building wealth through real estate in Connecticut. You will get the best techniques from leading local experts in real estate and lending. Now, here's your host, Robert Weinberg. Welcome. In today's episode, I want to unpack the topic of when is the right time to buy or invest in real estate. Been getting this question a ton lately from both first time buyers as well as real estate investors. So I wanted to do an entire episode to just unpack it and give you all the information you need to determine if it's your right time to buy or invest. So, what should you be looking at when it comes to buying and investing in real estate? Well, the first thing is I'll tell you what you shouldn't be looking at and what you shouldn't be listening to. You shouldn't be listening to the media, that's for sure. And you also shouldn't be listening to people that are not actively buying and selling real estate in this market right now. What I'm really saying is don't listen to your Uncle Joe or your colleague at work or anybody else that doesn't understand and doesn't have intense knowledge of the current real estate market. The media is probably the worst place because they're just there to get ratings. They're always doom and gloom, and they're always saying it's a bad time to buy a home. If you had listened to them back in 2018, 19, and 2020, well, a lot of people wouldn't have all the equity that they have in their homes right now. So what is this all about? It's about your personal circumstance. That's what you need to be looking at. That's what's going to determine whether it's the right time to buy or invest in real estate. Your personal circumstances. It's not about the interest rates. It's not about the prices. Really doesn't matter. Given the interest rates, given the prices, can you afford it or not? Does it make sense financially for you when you actually work those numbers out? All right. So one thing that I want to spend a minute talking about is a concept I call your personal chapter in life. When you think about your life as a book, there's different chapters, and there's certain chapters in life that lend itself to flexibility and mobility and just being a free spirit. But there's also chapters in life that lend themselves to stability and foundation and planting seeds and creating roots. Those are the ones that real estate can help with. Real estate investors that have that need to build wealth, create a legacy, financially set themselves up for life. That's the chapter I'm talking about that will allow you to get there through real estate. So think about where you're at with your personal chapter right now as you listen to this. Is the chapter you're in right now lending itself to renting or to buying? Maybe it's saying, hey, I should just live with family. But there's got to be that personal circumstance, that personal chapter, and that personal calling to be a homeowner, or else it's just not going to work. It really isn't. But we can't talk about the right time to buy or invest if we don't talk about finances, because at the end of the day, it does cost money to buy homes. And there's a lot of financial obligations involved in real estate, right? So once we determine the personal chapter of where you're at in your life, then we want to look at financial circumstances. Now, I know you might have been told by somebody that bought homes years ago that you could get into a house with like zero down or maybe even get money back when you buy a home, but that's just not the case in the real estate market of 2024 and beyond. I can tell you that it's very rare for someone to buy a house right now with zero money out of pocket. No money down payment maybe, but you still have to come up with some closing costs, prepaid items, things like that. And the seller is rarely paying for those now like they did before. So your financial circumstances need to lend themselves to allow you to qualify. And what does that mean? It means having some savings, number one. You know, what's entry level? I really think eight to 10,000. If you're not sitting with eight to 10,000 either in your accounts or you can get it in a gift or just something that you've got the ability, the financial resources, then you can't even afford closing costs on an entry level home. So you really don't have any business buying a home. That's the truth. Even though you may want to in your personal chapter is saying you need to, if you don't have a foundational level of savings, you just can't buy a home right now. 
So that's the savings part. Obviously, the more you have, the better, the more prepared you are. But the other part of it is the monthly payment. So with the interest rates being much higher now than they were years ago, we have to consider what the monthly payment is. And it doesn't matter if your rate ends up being six, seven, eight, or anything beyond that. The question you really need to ask yourself is, can you afford that monthly payment? And specifically, can you afford the monthly payment for the next few years? So what I'm talking about is the exit strategy for the mortgage. It's a refinance opportunity, right? At some point, the rates are going to go down. You're going to be able to get a lower payment. We just don't know when that is. There are some real estate professionals that are having people and telling people that they can refinance in a year or the specific amount of time. And we just don't know when, right? So you have to be prepared to pay this monthly payment comfortably for at least several years. You really do. And if you can't, then it's not a good time. It's not the right time to buy or invest in real estate. If you're a real estate investor looking at this, then you need to make sure that your cash flow from the property can handle the monthly mortgage payment. So if the mortgage payment is $2,500, what's the rent? Does it cover it or not? And if it doesn't, can you make up the difference comfortably? You really got to look at that now because with a lot of these investment opportunities, having a strong positive cash flow in the beginning isn't, it just isn't happening that much now. So a lot of the investors I'm seeing are break even or maybe a few hundred dollars positive at most. Okay. So do your personal financial circumstances allow you to buy a property now? And the other thing to discuss on this topic is timing. How long are you going to own the home? So there's an old adage, which I really agree with, that real estate is a long-term investment. So we want to look at it from that context. And the normal timeline, I tell my buyers, is five to seven years. You want to be able to hold that property for five to seven years in order to really have an option to get a good return on your investment. Many, many times, if you buy a home and resell it quickly, like within a year or two, many times you're going to lose money unless you're doing a flip or, or something like that. But if you're an occupant that's just going to live in the house, you have to have that longer term outlook. doesn't mean you need to live in the house for five to seven years. You generally only need to live in it as an owner occupant for a year or so, but you at least need to be prepared to hold on to that property and make that payment for five to seven years. Anything less is short sighted and real estate takes time to appreciate. And as we're discussing on the in interest rates, that can take some time to come down as well. It never happens as quick as we hope, right? So we need to be prepared for the long term of that for sure. And this is how you do it by just stacking out all of the expenses, your income, and making sure that you can do it. If you just started a business or your cash flow is sporadic, then buying a home right now may not be good for you. That's for sure. So I want to hone in on my first-time home buyers for a second. If you're a first-time home buyer wondering, is it the right time for you to buy real estate? to get your first home, you know, really think about and model out what does a monthly payment look like for your ideal home with tax, insurance, everything. Can you afford it? If not, what can you afford? So we reverse engineer the numbers and say, okay, if you're comfortable with $2,000 a month payment, what does that get you in the market? And is it realistic? And sometimes the answer is it's not. But you need to be honest with yourself and with your team of professionals as to what you can afford, because it's really important to create long-term and sustainable home ownership. You also don't want to be using your last penny to buy a home. You want to have that nest egg in savings or 401k or somewhere so that when something happens, not if, but when, you have something to fall back on. If you're spending every dime getting into the home with your closing costs or down payment, then what happens when the hot water heater goes out? What happens when there's some sort of maintenance or repair that has to get made and you don't have the money? Well, I'll tell you what happens is you end up going into debt using credit cards, that sort of thing. So I really recommend having an emergency fund set up in addition to your down payment or closing fund because that will protect you. 
and make sure that you have the ability to have that long-term home ownership. Now, if you're a real estate investor, what you should be looking at is the strategy that you're going to use, right? Are you a fix and flipper? Are you using the Burr strategy to buy, renovate, rent it, and refinance it? Or are you a long-term hold where you're just going to buy a property, get a tenant in there, and hold on to it for appreciation and for rental income? So depending on what your specific strategy is, that will determine your timeline. So the fix and flip is the highest risk, highest risk, highest reward, because you can fix the property up, create a lot of value and resell it maybe in just a few months and create a large profit. But the risks are so big, especially if you haven't done it before, that it's just it's a difficult, difficult thing to do especially to get started. And so if you're someone trying to do like your first fix and flip, you better have some financial uh, cojones, as they say, because there's no way you're going to get out of your first fix and flip without a scar. Ask any real estate investor that's done them. They're not easy. Okay. But if you have the risk tolerance and the cash in the bank to support it, then it may be something that is worthwhile for you. But any first timers or people without that risk tolerance, just don't even mess with the fix and flip investing. The Burr method, which is buy, uh, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. So this is where you buy a property, then you renovate it, then you rent it out to a tenant at a good cash flow, and then you refinance it and pull your equity out. Now, this is a more like mid to long term strategy. So there's a lot of work on the front end to do the rehab and everything. But once you have a tenant in there and you refinance the property, it's really a matter of, you know, how long do you want to keep it? Many times people will get the cash flow up using this strategy and keep it for a really, really long time. And then the long term hold is where you're buying a property to put a tenant in it and just hold on to it for rental income and appreciation. And really with any of these longer term, like five to seven years is what I'm looking at, minimum timeline. And I have many that say you should never sell a real property, never. You should just hold on to it forever, right? You can just borrow against it, repeat this process and build long-term wealth. So the other topic that I wanna mention to everyone, whether you're buying your first home, second home or investing in real estate is the seasonality factor. And is there a way that you can get an advantage in the timing of real estate by purchasing in certain seasons, right? So the answer is yes. And we've done entire episodes on this topic. Seasonality is a current that drives the real estate market. So what I'm talking about is in the winter, things are a little bit slower with real estate. There's not as many transactions going on. A lot of buyers get out of the market. In the summer, that's the hottest time of year. Everyone's in, lots of competition. You got bidding wars, especially nowadays. So if you are somebody that has that flexibility, you want to buy with the seasonality in mind. So that means buying in the winter. You know, If you have the ability that is a great time to buy. If you buy in the summer, you just have to be prepared for more competition. You have to be prepared for a lot of emotional buyers. So people are buying based on like their family, their kids, they have to get into certain schools. Sometimes they make bad financial decisions by doing that. They really do. And you don't want to be a byproduct of that involved in something like that. Um, because you need to be buying real estate logically. As we're talking about, there are certain personal circumstances that need to be understood, but you also need to make the best decisions for you in your pocketbook too, right? Your wallet. So economic trends, I really think, shouldn't be followed when it comes to the real estate market because, again, it's all about your personal situation. So if the numbers work, even if everyone's saying it's a bad time to buy a home, if the numbers work for you, it's the right time to buy a home. And I've got investors that just laugh their way to the bank while everyone's saying bad time to buy real estate and they're finding deals. 
And I have buyers right now that are having huge success in the real estate market while people are saying, oh, the prices are too high, the rates are too high. And there's people out there having huge success right now. First time buyers, repeat buyers, real estate investors. Why not you? So as we wrap up our episode, I want to ask a few questions for you to ask yourself, which is, where are you at in your personal chapter in life? And does that personal chapter lend itself to buying or investing in real estate? Do your personal finances put you in a confident position where you have money saved and you feel comfortable moving forward with a real estate transaction and not using every penny that you've saved, but actually having some money left over? Does the monthly payment on an average mortgage in your price range scare you or are you okay with it? If it scares you, then don't get involved in the market today. It's not your right time. But if you're okay with it, if it allows you some financial peace of mind to know that you've got that fixed rate mortgage payment versus renting, then it's your right time. And I want to be here to support you in that time. So reach out to me if I can help you put a plan together for buying your first home, repeat, move up or real estate investment, we can talk specific strategy and put together the best plan for you in your situation. And I know that everybody out there has a different idea about what real estate means to them, but whatever it means to you, we can help you get there. So I hope you found value in today's episode. I hope that I've given you some knowledge and education on what to be talking about, what to be thinking about when you're talking about when the right time is to buy or invest in real estate. Robert Weinberg signing off until next time. Take care. Thanks for listening. If you have questions about the information we've covered or would like to discuss mortgage financing for your situation, you can reach Robert Weinberg by visiting www.robgw.com.